So here what we're looking at is another nature-based solution, but this is a very different application. What we're looking at today is a soil-based constructed wetland system. So reed beds are a term that are sometimes used as well. For generally, I'd use reed beds for gravel systems, but this is a soil-based constructed wetland, and it's, a, it's basically a sewage treatment system. So what we see here, up behind us there's a septic tank, and the effluent from the tank from a three-bedroom house is flowing out through that sewer pipe there. If you want to take a quick look, you can see the pipe flowing in, and then the liquid from the septic tank will flow down through this basin, through the plants and plant stems, it'll gather at the far end of this basin and then flow through the bank and if you want to follow me along you'll just be able to see the inlet pipe at the far basin. So what's happening here is that the water comes in from the septic tank, it's been settled and as it comes into the basin it gets time to settle further. So the suspended solids can settle out, the plants will draw oxygen down through the stems because wetland plants have evolved over the centuries, over the millennia, you know, long before humans evolved, to draw oxygen down to the roots because they like to breathe and they can't breathe under the water. So they pull the oxygen down and it actually becomes available there for aerobic bacteria to function. And it's those aerobic bacteria that actually do a lot of the work in terms of the water treatment within a constructed wetland. So there's also going to be sunlight coming into the system to some extent, although in a few years time the plants will thicken up. But as that sunlight comes in in the early years it'll kill off pathogenic bacteria. And the other thing that kills off the bacteria, pathogenic bacteria is the, the harmful bacteria that come from sewage. The, um, the, the retention volume within this basin will also help to kill off bacteria. Pathogenic bacteria particularly like the temperature in the gut. So as soon as they leave and get flushed into a septic tank and into the constructed wetland, the temperatures begin to drop. So you get a very good die off of bacteria numbers simply by virtue of the length of time that it takes for the water to flow through the basin. So follow me along here and we'll have a look and see what we can find. So you can see the duckweed floating on the surface of the water. That's particularly good for mopping up phosphorus, um, phosphorus within the sewage. And it'll also soak up nitrogen, but particularly good for phosphorus. So here at the outlet point, we've got water flowing into the outlet manhole just here, or actually just an outlet pipe. And you can see there's a slight murkiness in the water here still. Remember, this is, it's just settled sewage effluent. So what this system basically does is the equivalent of a mechanical aeration system. So instead of buying a mechanical aeration system and dropping it into place, which you need to keep plugged in and working 24-7, 365 days a year, with a lot of electricity usage and a lot of carbon footprint, what we've got is a very, very natural system instead that will help to filter the water, aerate the water and oxygenate it and treat it with no electricity whatsoever. So it's all working on, working on gravity. So the liquid is flowing through the bank and in through this pipe here and it's really important to get a very good seal of clay around that pipe because if you don't get your seal of clay that pipe in the first chamber becomes pretty much useless as a flow control level um, flow control pipe at the moment it's dictating the liquid level right across that marsh whereas at the, um, if you didn't get a good seal of clay around that pipe the liquid would just seep around the pipe and come straight in through here and that level would draw down then and be just less effective. Not, not useless, but certainly less effective. So here the liquid is coming in. You can see the, the liquid dripping into this manhole. I'm not going to touch it because this is sewage effluent in here. Ideally it should be fenced after, after it's finished. And we can see that the, the liquid here is still a little bit murky. It gets much cleaner towards the end. And you can see the plants beginning to thicken up around the outer edge. So this is the next stage of treatment within a two basin process. There's two stages to this system. There's what's termed the secondary treatment stage, which is the first basin, and then this is the tertiary treatment stage, which is the second basin. And they, these are both necessary because the liquid from this is flowing out into a drain. And if there was a percolation area after this, we'd get away with just that size over there, just the secondary treatment stage, whereas we need secondary and tertiary to get the water much, much cleaner again before discharge. The treatment processes are identical. It's all exactly the same stuff. We've got the oxygen being drawn down by the plants. We've got settlement taking place by virtue of the deep water and the slow movement. We've got sunlight penetration, killing off the pathogens, the, the retention volume. There's going to be 
chemical and physical processes taking place within the soil at the base of the system as well. There's adsorption of phosphorus and heavy metals onto the, the soil colloids themselves, the little fines of soil, and they'll bind to, to metals and things like that. And um, as the plant material falls in, it forms a, it, it'll form a filter system, basically like water passing through straw. Because what you're seeing is the very, very early stages of planting. This was planted this spring, and you can see it's thickened up a little bit, but in two years' time, this will be a thick mat of vegetation and a lot of strawy material within the basin. And it's actually one of the... One of, basically what we're doing is we're building a creche for bacteria, actually, in a nutshell. That's what it is. So when the plant material falls in, the water will flow through that strawy plant litter, leaf, leaf litter debris, and the bacteria sticking to that debris are what filter out a lot of the, the nutrients within the water and reducing our nitrogen, our phosphorus, our BOD, which is the biochemical oxygen demand. It's another measure of the organic pollution within the water. We'll be reducing heavy metals and oils, fats and greases. All of those things will be, will be reduced and the, sed the sediments, the suspended solids. So as we can see here, if we look in close up to this pipe, you can see that the liquid here at the outlet end is a lot cleaner than it was. And it, we've got a lot of the same species that we're using in our nature-based um, nature solutions for the farms. You can see the water mint and flower there. This is the bulrush growing up through it. We've got Glyceria maxima um, throughout the area. There's duckweed. So there's a lot of different species that are, that are all in the basin, but they're all actually the same species that we're using in our pond, in our, in our farm scale nature-based solutions. And then as we come to the outlet, there's a final piped flow out through the bank here. And again, we've got that same, there's a, a very important function of getting a good clay seal around that pipe. Otherwise the water would drop down and we'd lose our water from our basin. And then it's trickling on down and into a small little drain then beyond and down onto the sea. So if it was, I think that we could probably do with a couple of plants here as well, just to thicken up that area as well. You know, any excuse to be putting plants in, I think is an excuse worth following. One of the things that's worth mentioning here is that this is a system, it's a sewage treatment system. It needs full planning permission in order to go ahead. Whereas the nature-based solutions on farms don't in the same way. Um, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be looking at streams and drains and buffer zones and all those things. There are different permissions needed, but planning permission isn't one of them. In this type of a scenario, what we've got is a formal constructed wetland system. This one is de designed by Vesey and Cork. Um, my own company, FH Wetland Systems, designs these. Alvin Morrow is also based in Donegal, close by. So there's a lot of designers around the country. And what we're doing basically is offering a, a, a zero electricity, kind of a, a low, what's the word, low carbon footprint way to treat water and to, and to get it really, really clean before it goes back into the wider environment. But the, the important note in all that is that full planning permission is needed for these.